I happened to bump into Father Sergio. He said, hey, I'm planning a pilgrimage with 12 men. It's the, the most important pilgrimage of the church, and it's in Spain. When I heard it, you know, it was a, it was a no-brainer for me. I'm a strong believer in no opportunities wasted. I said, how could I say no to this? You have to walk and walk and walk and walk some more. Come on, Kevin! Your brain will tell you to quit as soon as you have a blister. Pilgrimages are a great way to search. Search for who you are, your identity, and your purpose, your meaning in life. If someone said, hey, if you go walk 500 miles, like you'll be a better man for those that you love, like would you do it? Your heart would go until you die. I want to do this because it's going to be the hardest thing I've ever done. You can do this. You can do this. And I felt that it was God telling me that. Keep going. Keep going. Do not give up. At the end of the day, you lay down and you realize, this is who I am. This is what I stand for and this is what I believe in. And so taking that back home, prices. The Camino is a metaphor for life. Everybody needs to enjoy this one time, you know. From Arizona, the announcement was made. Wanted, 10 brave souls willing to walk 500 miles in 40 days along an ancient journey that's been traveled for centuries. Arrival at the destination is not guaranteed. Only days of suffering, driving rain, bitter cold, and intense heat. Injuries, muscle aches, and blisters are to be expected. Discouragement and the daily desire to quit will haunt you. Sleep will be scarce at times outside, on the cold ground, subject to the forces of nature. Losing your way amidst the beautiful yet unpredictable landscapes of northern Spain will add grueling miles to the journey, but in turn, you may find yourself. Some say along this Camino they have found the path of their life. See you there. Camino lesson 19. Mental balance. It's what a lot of us strive for. First of all, accept that there's no such thing. Everything in life vibrates, it goes up and down. Secondly, a disbalance is not caused by anything outside of you. It's caused by something within you and then triggered by out of stressors. Find out why something triggers you so much it brings you out of balance then see how you can resolve it within you. Hey guys, I made it. <laughs> there it is. I feel very, very emotional. I'm very proud of myself and I just cannot believe that I walked 800 kilometers through Spain. Camino 
lesson 20. Whenever you're stuck in life, go walk. Walk alone, in nature, without your phone, without a purpose. Just walk. I'm finally at the end of the earth. It's really amazing, it's so pretty. And the last one, Camino lesson 21. Don't worry about things you cannot change. Only think about things that enrich you or pleasure you. What's up, travel lovers, peregrinos, and future peregrinos? I just completed the Camino del Norte, which is one of the most popular routes of the Camino de Santiago, a 835 kilometer hike. And this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the 10 most important things to know before doing the Camino. These are helpful tips that will help you save time or make the experience more enjoyable. My number one tip is to have a really good pair of shoes and to make sure that the shoes are broken in before you start the Camino. So what I mean is don't go buy really amazing hiking shoes and that the first time you're using them is day one of the Camino. This will most certainly give you blisters and once you have blisters, it is much more difficult to make sure that they heal or they just kind of can continue to get worse. So I would recommend getting a good pair of shoes that you, um, I would say hike at least 100, 150 kilometers in them before going on the Camino. And that way these shoes are really broken in, they're used to your foot, your foot's used to them. Um, regarding the shoes, um, you know, I, ask, I get asked a lot uh, as to what shoes to take. Um, this is gonna be a personal preference. Um, I generally don't wear boots or things that go above the ankle, um, but that just depends on you. Um, I like things that are a little bit more lightweight. I went with these Solomons. I'll put the information in the description below, um, but they were perfect. They had Gore-Tex, um, so they were pretty much waterproof. They had no laces, so it was one of these quick laces, um, which I actually like. Um, the shoes are pretty light. Um, and I thought they were great. Uh, the only time that they got wet is when it was raining really hard and of course, you know, when the water comes in through the ankle, there's uh, not much they can do, even if the shoe is waterproof. But I highly recommend these and if you want ankle support, well then maybe go with the boots, but just know that the boots will be heavier. Number two, this is very important. Um, I was sure to pack uh, water, so I just had like a, a Nalgene, or this one was made by Camel Pack, and there are plenty of places to fill up water along the way, but I would definitely suggest carrying a minimum of one liter of water. Uh, unless you're coming in the summer, where it's gonna be hotter, uh, you might want to pack one and a half, possibly two liters of water, just depends on how much you sweat. Um, and also when it comes to food, I always made sure to have, I uh, had both nuts and cured meats. So they have uh, fuet in Spain, which is really delicious. It's one of my favorite. But I went for things that didn't weigh so much and that were high in uh, calories. So both the nuts and the meat, uh, they pack well, they don't take much space and they don't get damaged. Like, so if you, for instance, buy a tomato and it's in your backpack, it's probably gonna get destroyed unless you have a protected area for it. Um, yeah, so basically if you have water and you have food, in the worst case scenario, you should survive the day and make it to a small town. 
Uh, but yeah, you don't want to make sure that you run out of food or water, otherwise the hike can get pretty uncomfortable pretty quickly. Number three, this could very well be the absolute most important of all of them, and this is to pack as least as possible. Literally, you are carrying this stuff almost a thousand kilometers, and every kilogram that you can get out of the backpack that you don't absolutely need, your body, and more importantly, your back, will thank you so much. Uh, I literally went with a small backpack, and I took three pair of underwear, three pair of socks, two pairs of pants, three shirts, and, uh, and I rotated them. And all this stuff was quick dry, um, which was nice. Um, but yeah, you really, if you could get your pack down to about five kilos, your experience will be so, so much more enjoyable. Also, they do, if you need to take more stuff or you really don't want to carry a backpack. There is a service for about five euros per day, the Correos, which is the national uh, mail company or service. They will transfer your bag to your next place that you're staying at. So they'll, they'll pick it up where you're at and then they'll deliver it probably while you're hiking to your next point of interest. The only thing is you have to make sure that you know where you're going to stay the night the next night. Uh, but if you want to go and not carry your backpack, it's a great way. And if you're going to do the whole Camino, you're talking about 150, 175 euros to have somebody take your bag and you don't have to carry it. Which, if you have the money, could be really nice. Number four, uh, plan accordingly. And this kind of means a lot of things. Uh, but each day, I would normally look at the map and I would review which towns I went through. I also maybe did some research online to see which places I wanted to stop at. Uh, for me, I was most interested in the beaches following along, since I was following along the coast uh, of northern Spain. Uh, but there's also churches and monuments. Uh, you might even be looking up certain restaurants. Um, but if you know at the beginning of the day you kind of just like go over it, it kind of makes it a lot easier than opposed to like walking and not knowing where you are and maybe you missed a highlight of the entire Camino because you didn't do that little bit of planning. Um, so don't over plan it either. Like just review the day that you're going to be hiking the day of before you start. Number five, um, there are some different applications out there where you can actually have the whole route of the Camino. I used maps.me and I was able to download a, a map into that app and then it wasn't 100% perfect, but it was great every once in a while when I wasn't sure uh, exactly where I was. It, it helped me to know that I was on the trail or how to get back on the trail. It also let me know how many kilometers I had hiked and how many more kilometers I had until the suggested endpoint. Um, you don't need this and uh, you know some will probably say it's more of an adventure without this app and without using your phone and there's probably some truth to that but if if you're a nervous Nelly like myself, you sometimes just want to know that you're in the right place and uh, having the app, uh, it helped me in a lot of situations. Uh, I probably could have done without it, but it, uh, it allowed the whole process to be a little bit more uh, relaxing, knowing versus just wondering where I was. Number six. Okay, there are many different styles of accommodation on the Camino, um, and it also varies also as to which route of the Camino you're doing. Uh, the most common and the traditional is to stay in a hostel or what they call an albergue. And this is normally pretty cheap, and it's about six euros to 12 euros per night. You can only stay one night uh, unless you're sick or you have some sort of medical problem. Um, this allows you to get the cheaper rate and you're supposed to get the stamp in your 
uh, credentials, uh, which is like kind of like a little passport where each stage you get a stamp, and you normally get the stamp um, at the uh, wherever you're staying, and that they check the last night to make sure that you are moving along the Camino and not just taking advantage of the cheap rates for the peregrinos or people hiking the Camino. Um, if you have a little bit more money, um, in many situations I was able to find uh, hotel rooms that were good for two people and it could be as cheap as 30, 35 euros and of course going all the way into the hundreds depending on the quality of the place. Uh, the smaller towns obviously don't offer as many uh, different types of accommodation, but there's also pensions, family-run hotels, uh, and then you will be going through about four or five cities. And in those cities, there's, you know, some of them even have five-star hotels. So it depends on what your budget is. Um, if you're trying to do it as cheap as possible, it's definitely the albergues. And then you'll be there pretty much with all other hikers. Um, but the amenities are very sparse. And, and even several of the albergues I stayed in, they gave you kind of like a, a medical... Like, like when you go to the hospital, like what they put over the bed is like a paper. Um, I assume that's just to stop the bed bugs, um, but it's not very comfortable. So if you are staying in the albergues, you might think to bring your own sleeping bag uh, just to be a little bit more comfortable. Uh, I didn't have one, so I just slept in my clothes, um, but it worked. Uh, I stayed in a, in a variety of all the different types of accommodation when I, when I, uh, when I did the Camino, yeah, I mean, I, I basically did everything but a five-star hotel, um, and it's nice, you know, whatever, whatever you prefer, don't let someone tell you that if you don't st stay in the albergues, that it's not the real Camino experience, the, the Camino is whatever you decide it is, there's not a right way, there's not a wrong way, so if you have the money, there's nothing wrong with staying in a pension or a two or three star hotel, you might find that it's substantially more comfortable and worth the money. Number seven, this was the hardest piece of information for me to find. Uh, when I first arrived at the starting point, I didn't know where to get the stamp for my credentials. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot of information, but basically almost any place that offers accommodation along the route, they have a stamp and it is sufficient. So you could go to another place that you're not even staying at and get the stamp. It happened to me like three or four times. I just went to a hotel and I asked them if they would stamp my credentials and they were more than happy to do so. Um, and this is really more for yourself, the credentials. Uh, you don't have to do this, um, but it's it's kind of like a, it's a really good souvenir to have it all with all the stamps along the places you went to. And at the very end, if you have, if you have, um, I think if you did at least 100 kilometers leading to Santiago, they will present you at an office this piece of paper saying that you completed it. Uh, I didn't actually do this because I don't know. I'm not a big souvenir person, but I do actually have the credential. It is right here. So I did keep this and I got all the stamps. Number eight. It is not required, but because you are going through many small towns, uh, not everybody speaks English. Learning a little bit of Spanish will help you very much. You know, just the very basics, um, smiling. Spanish people are very accommodating, very hospitable. Um, and learning just a few words or phrases can make the experience a lot more enjoyable. Uh, allows you to connect with the locals and, and learn a little bit more about the culture. Uh, so I definitely recommend learning a little bit of Spanish. I mean, you don't need to take any professional classes, but you know, just go online and type in basic Spanish and try and learn some basic phrases, obviously, hola, adios, uh, buenos dias. Number nine, this is also super, super important. 
hand washing your laundry. Because of the nature of how this trip is done, every night you're staying in a new place, which means you can't use hotel laundry service because they won't, if you give it to them at night when you arrive, they won't have it ready until maybe the following afternoon, which you should be halfway to your next stop. So I had this really cool device, it was called a scrubba, and it is like this waterproof bag, um, and you fill with water, and I used this soap um, uh, from Sea to Summit, and it was a uh, environmentally friendly, high concentrate, so it came in a very small bottle, and you only needed a very, very tiny amount to wash your clothes. I would normally go two days, I'd put my clothes in it, I'd wash it, and I'd hang it somewhere to dry. And this was great. I mean, I basically, as soon as I got in, I would take the clothes off, I'd wash them, put them in the bag, wring them out, fill it back up with water, and then do, you know, and just hang it up. And this worked out really great. And also what's really cool about the scrub -a bag is that when you have the dirty clothes, you can put your dirty clothes inside of this bag and it seals it. So, you know, when you have stinky clothes, even though you put it in a plastic bag, sometimes that smell makes all your clean clothes stinky. So this, this thing actually really holds the stench in, I think is the best way of saying it. Uh, I highly recommend uh, this device, especially if you're doing, I mean, even just as a traveler in general, this is a great, great device. Um, I use it all the time now, I'm a huge fan. Number 10. Traveling in general can be stressful. This trip is no exception. It possibly could be even more stressful because you are going with limited things. Um, you're out in sometimes the wilderness or the countryside where you don't have access to internet um, and typical things you're used to. Um, so it's not uncommon to freak out or to stress. But I really want to tell you, if you can, to just relax. That if something happens, just take a deep breath, or many deep breaths, and figure out how to solve the problem. Uh, freaking out is only going to make the situation worse and take away from enjoying the experience that is the main reason of doing the Camino. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. Also, check out my entire series. I did seven videos covering all 34 days of the Camino. I would love it if you check those out and leave a like or subscribe, share it with a friend. Much appreciated, muchas gracias, and buen Camino, safe travels.